It's uh, Dirt Nation News Network with a very thick man. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Dirt Nation Off Road. So, today, what we're bringing you is uh, more Dirt Nation news. Did, did Dirt Nation fake news? Dirt Nation News Network? What are we calling this, guys? I have no idea. Now, about a month ago, we, we did a, a new style of video. I was kind of just hanging out, talking to you guys about some things that were going on, mainly uh, to do with the recent closures out in Big Bear and the San Gabriel Mountains and San Jacinto Mountains and all those other places. And um, I got a lot of feedback from that video that you guys want me to do more, you know, news related stuff, talking points, sitting down, getting into all this shenanigans. So we're gonna try it. So we, we have our first uh, studio setup. Now this is something completely new to me. I, I've done zero research on how to do a proper studio setup. So I, I got a couple lights shining nice and bright on me. I have my computer, I have a bottle of water, I have a screen to look at some stuff, and I have mini winchers, which is, mini winchers is broken. Recently took mini winchers out to a meet and, and we were messing around and I broke the axle. Wheel fell off, so we did the, the trusty uh, log mod <laughs> and we got it off the trail. Anyways, um, we're gonna be talking about a couple different topics today. Um, I'm looking to talk about some news and some things that, that I know for sure. Well, maybe not necessarily know for sure, but some things that I've heard, give you some updates on uh, some current things going on. And then I wanna try something a little new where we're gonna talk about uh, some you know developments in the automotive world or maybe the off-road world, whatever the hell you wanna call it. Pretty much, just a spoiler, we're going to talk about the new Tacoma. And I'm just going to give some thoughts on the new Tacoma. It hasn't been revealed yet, but we'll, we'll talk about that, you know, we'll talk about it right now. Now, before we get started with this, make sure you guys check out our Patreon. People are always asking us what's the best way to support you guys. What is the best way for us to get in on your runs, check out new stuff with you, get involved, you know, just be kind of be more Dirt Nation. The best way to do that is Patreon. Patreon is how you can support us. Patreon is... The, it's how we keep the lights on. It's how we're able to, you know, continue growing this community, continue bringing you guys new content, different styles of content, and then continue being completely reckless out there on the trails, getting you guys some good content and having fun and doing all the things that, that we love to do, right? We're here to build positive culture. We're here to have a good community and put a big stamp on the community and do good things for it. And Patreon is the backbone currently to making that happen. So if you guys want to check out Patreon, we'll have a link down below. It's how we do a lot of our new runs. We do a lot of cool discussions on there. It's a really good family that we're developing and we're always looking for new ways to continue developing that. So check it out down below. Now getting into our first topic, uh, we're going to be talking about Azusa Canyon. Shocker. You know, we talk about Azusa a lot on this channel. Rightfully so. It's right in our backyard. It's one of our favorite places to go. And a lot of people really are interested in the things that are happening at Azusa. So Ever since all the recent rain, the storms, the snow, all of that stuff, uh, Zusa's been closed. It opened up for, shoot, maybe about a week. We had one run, and then it closed again when we got hit by like the big blizzard that really wiped out everything. So currently, from the sources that I've talked to, people in the Forest Service, Azusa is going to be closed for the next four to six weeks, maybe longer, maybe a little bit shorter. It really depends on a few things. But currently the dam is completely filled up at both levels. The water crossing is rushing still to where vehicles can't even cross it. And then the water level is so high, I believe it's past the island to where it's way past the bridge, way past the island to where we don't really have much park to work with anyways. So I know they're draining water. They're trying to get rid of some of it because they're gonna continue their dredging project. So that means they're gonna probably drain all the water to the next reservoir or whatever the hell they do. But in that time, Hopefully the park will start to open up and we'll be able to do some things. Obviously when that time comes, we're going to be involved. You know, usually when there's a cleanup or anything going on in Azusa Canyon, uh, we make sure to get involved. That's one of the other benefits of Patreon. The last few times we had to do some trail maintenance on Azusa Canyon. Uh, we were able to go to our Patreon. We gathered a bunch of people got together and we were able to do a bunch of cool stuff to help get the park ready, you know, marking off borders, marking off water crossings, closing off sections that people aren't supposed to go, you know, tearing down obstacles, getting rid of, op, you know, like trees or things that are going to be dangerous to people that are driving around, all of that stuff. So as soon as we do have updates when it's going to open, we will let you guys know. Now, second thing concerning Azusa Canyon, I have a cool little announcement. If you guys are heading out to the LA County Fair, the Forest Service is actually going to have a booth set up 
and there i don't know what vehicles they're gonna have they might have a couple mud trucks they might have a cool things going on but what they will have is a video that was edited by myself getting a bunch of different footage of people over the years probably since we first started in azusa canyon back in like 2018 2017 i put together a compilation video of all of this cool stuff we've been doing in Azusa Canyon, you know, the drone shots, people playing in the mud, playing on obstacle courses, playing on the hills, and then all the volunteer work. Put all that together in a video that they're gonna be playing nonstop at the booth. So if you guys go to the booth, make sure to check it out, see the cool things that are going on. Now, once the LA County Fair wraps up, I'll actually release that video on the YouTube channel so that you guys can see, you know, what I put together. It's nothing like too crazy, it's just like kind of Azusa porn, if you will. It's just, you know, a bunch of cool clips of things put together, some cool classic clips and, and all that fun stuff. Now, the other thing that people have been asking about quite a bit is the Forest Service closures. Now, I don't really have an update on that. There really hasn't been any developments. The only thing I could say is, luckily it's been heating up quite a bit. So we're expecting a lot of that snow to melt and hopefully we can get to a point where they can get in there and assess the things that are going on, as well as give people an opportunity to recover the vehicles that are out there broken on the trail. I know of a few vehicles I'm not going to say where, but I know that they're on certain trails, broken down, ready to be recovered, and I've already told some of those people that we're willing to go help them recover if we can get approval from the Forest Service, just so that not only we can get you guys some cool content, but we can get them get their vehicle back because it must suck not having your vehicle for over a month now, and having to wait another two months is really going to suck. So hopefully there could be some opportunities to not only do that, but maybe assess the trails so that, hey, maybe they can open something up here, open up something there. That way we can start to have a little bit more access to the trails because I know we're all itching to get out to the mountains again. And then lastly, for news related stuff uh, from us, we got a few things coming up that I am planning. I can't talk about all of them, but I am planning some runs. I'm gonna get you guys a schedule of some cool things coming up for the rest of spring as well as summertime. In addition to the runs, what I'm looking to do is, you know, once we get this whole studio set up, you know, really ironed out to where I know exactly what I'm doing with my lights and I'm doing with recording and I like the format, I wanna get into more instructional information based videos because there's a lot of knowledge and experience that has gotten into here as well as into other people that have been at with us on the trail. So I want to start exporting that to you guys, right? Because the two things that we like to do here at Dirt Nation Off-Road is entertain and educate. We do a very good job, or at least I'd like to say we do a good job of entertaining you guys. I think we do a good job of educating you guys, but I want to do better at it. So I currently have a list of uh, probably 20 to 25 topics that I'd like to start you know, going over some stuff, some of the stuff I can record here with overlays of videos and talking about different vehicles and concepts and, you know, different instructional things. Other videos may be out on the trail. Maybe we'll loop them into trail runs. You know, that's something that I need to work better at doing is, is you know, yes, we have a trail run, but let's add some value to our trail run by providing information and cool things and and stuff for you guys to learn so that when you're out there on the trail, you guys can be, you know, <laughs> We're not professionals, but you know, professionals, you know, you can be a little more experienced and a little more knowledgeable on the things that you're doing out there. So I'm looking to do a lot more of that. I think this is a good start making this video, talking about this stuff, feedback from you guys, support, liking, and all that stuff helps out, right? It helps us continue to do these cool things and try new things and continue pushing in a you know, not just forward, but in different directions so that we can do bigger things. I think I've rambled enough with, with, with news. Um, let's talk about the new Tacoma. Now, I have a couple articles pulled up. I got some photos pulled up. Um, I don't, you know, they haven't released the new Tacoma yet. They're expecting it within the next couple days. Toyota's been teasing it with some photos. So we know it's going to be coming out pretty soon. Now, I'm an owner of a third gen Tacoma, so I think I can give some good feedback on Tacoma ownership. Um, you know, also being an old school Toyota owner, you know, there's a lot of feedback that us Toyota guys can give on these trucks because there's good things about these trucks, but there's also bad things about these trucks. And what I don't want and what I foresee is them continuing to go down the road that may not be 
favorable for for what Toyota has traditionally been been good at. Anyways, let's jump into a couple of these articles. Let's read a few things and then I'll talk about it, talk about some feedback and what I hope to see from the Tacoma and what we'll probably see based off of other vehicles that have been getting released and just kind of market trends or, you know, technology trends with vehicles, Toyota, all that stuff. So first things first, I have a, an article from Gear Patrol. The new Tacoma, they've teased a couple photos. Uh, it looks like it's taking a lot of cues from the new Tundra, which I, I think is good and bad. Um, you know, the, the styling of it, it reminds me a lot of the new Silverados, which I don't know how I feel about that. I'm gonna be honest. Um, you know, a couple of the concept photos that I've seen of the new Tacomas, they look cool, but they don't look great. The biggest thing I'm concerned about is the chin, the face, the nose, the entire front end of that truck continues to get bigger when I would argue it needs to get smaller, right? Some feedback, third gen Tacomas are disgusting in the front end. They tend to fall apart, especially with abuse. It's, it's held together by two plastic clips and two longer clips with some screws through it. That's the only thing holding the freaking, you know, whole grill onto the truck and they fall apart quite easily. Mine are held together by zip ties. Now, obviously, Yes, I know I abuse my truck, but I know other guys that have, you know, done replacements on their grills, you know, did like a grill insert, maybe it's a little bit heavier, some run metal ones. Even if you don't run a metal one, just by changing and messing with that grill insert and using the truck, they, they tend to sag, they tend to break. Same with the headlights, the whole mechanism all up front. It is quite bad. So seeing that these front ends are gonna get a little bit bigger, much like the Tundra, I, it's not exciting. It's definitely not exciting. And I'm expecting more technology to be pushed out there. You know, they're gonna have more self-driving stuff. They're gonna have more of the lane assist, which is fine. I, I respect the fact that we're getting into new technologies and new things, but what I don't like is that stuff tends to fail. You even seen it with the third gen Tacomas. I think in like 2019, 2020, 2021, they started coming out with this lane assist. And once a part of that fails, it affects everything. I remember, uh, I think it was Dirt Lifestyle Nate. He had an issue with his, it got dirty or wet or something and it started affecting his tail lights and his ability to, you know, like charge stuff. It, it was, you get some wonky electrical issues with these front ends. So I'm a little concerned about it. They're not the ugliest based off of the concept photos that we're seeing. The new Tundra stock, Kind of looks okay. I think once it gets built up a little bit, when you put some bigger tires, when you put a bumper on it and you kind of give it a little bit more higher clearance and uh, a little bit better approach angle, I think they look a lot better. So looks wise, the front end is what's concerning me the most. As for the rest of it, it looks like it's much in line with what you normally see from a Tacoma. It's actually squaring out a little bit rather than like it, it, in the second gen was like pretty round. Then the third gen got a little bit more square, more sharper edges with some with some you know shapes in there. It looks like it's getting even more squarish. So like we're kind of going back to a square body-ish type of look, which you know, it's not the ugliest thing in the world. Um, we'll just have to see how it looks when it comes out. So first, uh, Tacoma will get a Trail Hunter version. So uh, Toyota previewed their new Overland Ready Trail Hunter grade for trucks and SUVs at the 2022 SEMA show in the Tundra concept. Trail Hunter will be the top of the line edition that slots above the TRD Pro. So they're gonna have a trim level above the TRD Pro now. So you can have what? The Trail Hunter, TRD Pro, TRD Off-Road, and then probably TRD Sport and SR5. Firm that the 2024 Tacoma is most anticipated will get the Trail Hunter model. ARB offered a preview of some factory added accessories that will be featured on the truck. We can also expect additional suspension lift among other features. So working with ARB, that's gonna be pretty interesting. Onboard compressor? Air lockers? No, I, don't, I really don't think it's gonna get an air locker. I think it's still gonna have an electronic rear differential locker. Do I think it'll get a front locker? That's a tough one. I hope so. I think that'd be really cool to get a front locker, but I don't know if the Tacoma's gonna get a front locker, but I'm curious about the ARB accessories. I mean, definitely a snorkel. You know, ARB makes the, the Safari snorkel. So that might be an option on, especially if it's like a Trail Hunter overlanding edition, you can expect, you know, something like that. Maybe some other accessories from ARB, I don't know, maybe fender flares or other little tiny cues here and there. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm gonna guess it's probably gonna be some kind of body kit, something along those lines. Maybe not necessarily performance upgrades, but maybe more visual cues with the ARB stuff. But 
I don't really know. Next thing, uh, Toyota Tacoma will get the iForce Max Hybrid V6. So what is this V6? So Toyota offered the first teaser image of the 2024 Tacoma, confirmed that the Charity Pro version will be offered with the 3.5, technically 3.4 liter iForce Max V6 hybrid engine used in the Tundra and Sequoia. That's pretty interesting, actually. Um, if they do do this, I, I wouldn't be too mad. It'll be pretty interesting having, because I think that Tundra motor is their top of the line Tundra motor. So maybe they would do, you know, maybe it's scaled down a little bit, you know, kind of like how, you know, the Raptors used, you know, they get the twin turbos with big turbos and then the Explorer, we get the same engine, but with like smaller turbos, who knows, they may do something similar to that. But the Tundra, that iForce motor, it's rated at 437 horsepower and a mammoth 583 pounds of torque. That's a lot of freaking power in a mid-sized truck. I, I have a hard time believing this will be the case, but who knows? I would be glad to see a V6 in this thing. Now for the base model, I, I do expect them to most likely have a probably four cylinder version. Now, what I'm curious about is they're probably gonna do a four cylinder boosted version, which is which is fine. Um, what I have my concern with with that is, you know, you get boosted motors plus direct injection. You know, we're continuing to push these vehicles to having higher horsepower with probably a lot less reliability. When I look at all this stuff, my main concern with the new Tacoma is over the years, right? You start with the, the first gen pickups. This is a second gen, third gens, and then you get into the Tacomas, you know, first, second, and third gen, and now we're getting into the fourth gen. The Toyota truck line has continued to, you know, progress down the line in terms of technology, which is perfectly understandable, right? As we continue to get more technological advancements, vehicles are gonna get better, they're gonna get new technology, they're gonna do all that stuff. That's great, I support that. I have concerns in the fact that Toyotas, specifically the Toyota trucks, are known for two things, right? They're known for being cheaper, and they're known for being cheap and easy to work on. I think as we get down the line and we start adding boosted motors, we add hybrid motors, we add, you know, front sensors, lane assist, more technology into these vehicles, they're gonna be less friendly for the average person to, I pick this truck up, I wanna work on it myself, I wanna service it myself. You know, you start getting into more proprietary BS, you know, much like you see with other vehicles where you get a check engine light or you get some kind of ABS light or traction control light and it'll throw off everything. That's not a good thing for especially us in the off-road community because when you start having all of these electrical issues, you could be out there on the trail and it'll completely ruin your whole day. It might leave you stranded, right? The third gen Tacoma is still among the same lines as these vehicles. They're cheaper to work on. They're easy to service. That's the type of vehicle where if you look at the 3.5 liter V6 that's on the current gen Tacoma, it is very similar to the 3.4, the 3.0 that came in the old pickups, very similar. Locations are the same. You know, if you need to work on it, you need to service it, change your spark plugs. If you need to do a timing chain on it, if you need to do, you know, whatever you need to do, it's all very similar, right? They didn't change much over the years. With the motor that I have right now, I feel comfortable that if I get to a point where I need to do some serious work and actually open up this motor and do some things, I feel like I could do it. And I have virtually, I don't have little, no experience, but I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a mechanic, right? But I'm somebody that will tinker and I can work on stuff. And I, I understand the basic concepts of working on, you know, vehicles and some engines and stuff. And I'm very familiar with the Toyota 3.4. So I, I feel like I could start to work on something like that. Once we start getting into hybrid stuff, we start getting into turbo and all of that stuff, then it's gonna change things, right? You're gonna have more sensors, you're gonna have more computers, you're gonna have more things that could fail on these vehicles. So I don't discourage Toyota from doing that, but as we continue to push down on technology, what's gonna happen is these vehicles are gonna be more expensive, they're gonna be harder to work on, and that's where my concern comes from. Now, back to the V6. Uh, like I said, if they came with the same motor as the Tundra at that point, why would you even buy the Tundra, right? If the, if the Tundra, I highly doubt they're gonna put the same motor from the Tundra into the Tacoma. I think they might have a V6 hybrid version, something scaled down to where it's not as good or as powerful as that Tundra motor, but we'll have to see. 2024 Tacoma will get Fox shocks and rear disc brakes. Yes! 
Fox shocks I'm not as worried about because we're, we're all going to change suspension anyways, right? I've always felt like the TRD Pro was a complete waste of money. Not because the TRD Pro is a bad truck, but be because the TRD Off-Road has all of the off-road features that you want of the TRD Pro. You get a interior upgrade, leather seating, you know, premium sound if you get that. But you can get premium sound on the, on the TRD Off-Road anyways. But you get suspension and wheels. Suspension, most of us are going to change our suspension out. Most of us are going to change our wheels out and... You know, at that point, the TRD Pro is is moot at that point. You don't really need it. But I digress. If the new Tacoma is going to be getting rear disc brakes, that is a huge upgrade for this truck. Drum brakes suck. I'm going to be honest. They suck. They, they suck to work on. They do not work very well. The only thing that drum brakes have working for them is that they do last longer than a standard uh, disc brake. Now, with the Tacomas, I will say the drum brakes have been a bad, bad thing for me. I've had wheel cylinders fail on me two times where they have overextended, completely destroyed themselves, and then when they overextended, they overextended the brake shoes to where the brake drum got stuck on there and I had to cut the brake drum off in order to fix my brakes. It would completely, you know, the two times that I have towed my truck home, was because of the same issue. So seeing that we're gonna have disc brakes on the Tacoma is huge. I'm super excited to see that. I've actually been thinking about doing a disc brake conversion because I've heard of a couple other people doing it. You know, doing a disc brake conversion I think would be good for my truck, but maybe just, you know, once we find one that's wrecked or something of the, of the new Tacoma, we can just swap that in there. But let's see, what other engines will the 2024 Tacoma offer? So base gas engine will likely be the 2.4 liter inline four that is used on the Highlander. So that's what I was talking about. If they do go with a inline four turbo, cool, that's great. It's gonna get good gas mileage. It's most likely gonna you know, have a good amount of power. That's all good. But as we continue down the direct injection, turbo, all this other stuff, these vehicles are gonna get less reliable, more expensive to work on. And that's, you know, I have my concerns with it, but I'm also a dinosaur, so that's just how it is. Another engine possibility is the hybrid max engine used in the Toyota Crown. 340 horsepower, 400 foot pounds of torque. See, that's what I was saying. They might put a dumbed down version of that hybrid max motor. So that's interesting. And then they have a couple concept photos. Now this concept photo of a potential EV Tacoma looks pretty cool. Um, the front end isn't too massive. It follows a lot of the same traditional profiles of a Toyota Tacoma. It doesn't look so Silverado-ish. So if we did get this, I wouldn't be mad. Now, speaking of EV Tacomas, um, although I like to see the older style, you know, easier to work on, cheaper vehicles, you know, when it comes to my Toyota Tacomas and the trucks that, that I would like to buy, I am definitely interested if we're going to go down this direction, right? Let's see how far we can get right now, right? I would like to see an all EV Tacoma come out. I think it'd be something cool. I would be interested in picking one up. I think, um, you know, we're obviously not set up for EV to be everywhere. So that's why they may not come out with this yet. But I think once we get to that point, I think that could be pretty cool, especially for reviewing and content and seeing capabilities because I would imagine if they did a all EV Tacoma, it would probably be very similar to the Rivian. The Rivian, we see some pretty cool stuff where they have four individual motors. So you have individually controlled wheels and it you know, gives you a lot of traction, a lot of horsepower, a lot of torque, and it's direct power, right? You're not transferring power from engine to transmission through drive shafts, differentials to tires. Now you just got power straight to the motor which is on the wheels, which is pretty cool. If we were to see something like that on the, the new Tacomas, I'd be interested in something like that. Um, but what I don't want is the entire line pushing towards that EV. I would like to see an EV and I'm interested in the things that will happen with that. But I want my old school, you know, easy to work on cheap Tacoma. They have a first look at interior. Um, Tacoma's interior, you know, a lot of Toyotas, you know, these things are 10 15 year old technology which you know i've never had anything nicer so i don't really worry about it right i'm totally fine with it you know i've, I've always been happy with the, with my tacoma's interior but if they continue upgrading the interior putting bigger displays all that stuff that's all cool i'm definitely not going to be mad at that one thing i'll mention is uh with the transmissions you know obviously the automatic transmission was a big problem 
on the third gen Tacoma. You know, they had a lot of issues with gear hunting and people had to get them tuned and updated and all this other stuff to where people were looking to run, you know, right out the bat, you know, before we had a tune available on the truck, people were putting pedal commanders in their truck. They were re-gearing and, you know, having all these different issues because the Toyota Trans sucks. It sucks. Sure, it's reliable. Sure, it's it can tow and it can do all that stuff. But the shift patterns and the gear hunting and all of that, you know, it made it gutless and it made it terrible to drive. Now, the stick shift didn't really have that problem. I drove a stick shift Tacoma a few times on a trail. Pretty cool. I like driving stick shift. Both my rock crawlers are stick shift. You know, I'm a big fan of it with off-road and daily driving. Definitely no complaints about a stick shift Tacoma. Will they continue to have a stick shift? I really hope so because, you know, the millennials and Gen Z, they don't know how to drive stick. That's the reality of things. You know, they're not learning. My kids are going to know. I'm going to teach them how to drive stick. You should teach your kids how to drive stick because it is a dying art, right? And they're going to continue to push out stick shift on vehicles. So I know, you know, Jeeps still have stick shift as an option. Tacomas was one of the ones that still has stick shift as an option. There might be a couple other vehicles out there. In terms of off-road, there's not many. But I do hope that stick shift is still an option for these trucks. Um, will the 2024 Tacoma get a coil sprung rear suspension? That'll be interesting. We'll have to see. I know the uh, the new Tundras have a coil sprung suspension. The Forerunners have had it uh, for years. I know that will generally ride better. It's maybe, I don't even know. I don't know if it's more reliable or less reliable than leaf springs. I'm personally a leaf spring guy. I'm used to leaf springs. I'm used to dealing with them. You know, all this linked crap and coil springs. I understand it, but I, I, I really don't. You know, leaf springs are always great. Um, you know, because it's an older technology, you know, we understand it. We, we know how it works. And plus, you know, now you, you know, what's cool about the third gen Tacoma is you can do the Chevy 63 leaf spring swap. You can do some other cool things. You can do shackle flips and, you know, all of that fun stuff. So, you know, if it comes out that, that it's going to be coil sprung in the rear, Hey, that is what it is. Maybe that's just a, a better reason for you to three-link the truck in the rear or do a four-link, but you have to move the gas tank. But you know, you guys get what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not mad at new technology, us trying new things, especially if it's something that's going to perform a little bit better you know, on the trail and off the trail. Continuing with this Toyota stuff. Now, one thing I will mention, this is completely off topic, and I have no articles to support. I have no other stuff. But I will tell you, and maybe you guys can, let's have a conversation about this in the comments. But with Jeep and the cool things that they've done, you know, they continue making the Wrangler rugged and more off-road friendly, right? Yes, they're adding technology, they're adding new stuff, but they're continuing to make them good off-road vehicles. The Bronco, same thing, right? You know, the Chevy Blazer, <laughs> they did the wrong thing. They made a Mobile, they made a fucking minivan, and they, the, the new Chevy Blazer, sucks right we can all agree on that the new bronco they did a great job with it right <sighs> some people may not like the bronco that's totally fine but what they did do a good job is they did make a legitimate competitor for the jeep wrangler by making it a more rugged off-road friendly vehicle that is at the same time luxurious right if you get inside of a new bronco especially like a new badlands you know one of the top of the line broncos they're nice inside they have nice equipment they have a nice display screen you know they have uh what is that shit called the uh, not polyurethane sheets uh, uh, they have nice seat covers they're not leather whatever that material is what the hell are this bronco seats vinyl that's what it was so you know the new seats they're vinyl they're, so they're not as like hot and sticky as leather but they're a little bit nicer than cloth the new broncos they somehow made them luxurious nice technologically more advanced than than you know they're continuing to push technology and, and cool stuff but they also made it an off-road rugged type vehicle that you can take on trails you can take off the doors you can remove the top it has off-road features has all that cool stuff toyota get your shit together respectfully the forerunner needs to have an option like this right the coolest thing ever right toyota changed the game when they came out with the first gen forerunner right this is a pickup but you know when they had the complete top and a removable top they changed the game yes the blazer was cool and they they were probably the first ones to do it same with you know obviously like jeeps and stuff like that but toyota was killing it with the first gen forerunner if they were to take something 
where they make a more rugged version of the 5th Gen 4Runner because, let's be honest, the 5th Gen 4Runner is cool, but it is a mom-mobile, right? It is not an... It can be rugged and off-road, and you can do some cool things with it. Not hating on the 5th Gen 4Runner. Kind of hating on it, but I'm not fully hating on it. What I'm trying to say is the 4Runner could be so much better, right? Bring back removable tops. Give us front and rear lockers. Give us the ability to take the doors off. Give us the ability to have cool navigation with trails. You know, all the cool stuff that Jeeps have. Give us a stick shift. Maybe give us a straight axle. That, that might be asking a little too much. I think if Toyota made a straight axle pickup or 4Runner, they'd fucking kill the market. But that's just besides the point. The Toyota 4Runner, if you continue to make a 4Runner like this, make one that is a more rugged version you know especially if we're going to get into a sixth generation of forerunner where they're going to redesign it when you redesign it redesign it to be rugged redesign it and give us an option to have something that's that's just ready for off-road stuff right to compete like really compete with the jeep and the bronco because yes the forerunner sells well the forerunner does appeal to a lot of people but the the forerunner is appealing to families to people that are you know, that just want a good SUV because the 4Runner is a good SUV. That's fine, right? But you guys have a lot of good SUVs, right? You got the RAV4. Do they make the RAV4 anymore? Whatever. You got the Sequoia. You got the Highlander. You got the, the freaking all the other stuff. Do they still make Land Cruisers? I don't know. Anyways, I think Toyota would benefit hugely from a rugged 4Runner that is, you know, very close to the classic style that we've gotten used to, right? This is coming from an off-roader. This is coming from a Toyota owner. I'm not the best market to sell to, but I can promise you that there's a lot of people out there that would pick something like that up. If you guys agree, comment below. If you disagree, comment below. I'm curious on your thoughts on that. All right, um, I think I've rambled enough. We've talked about a few things, right? We've talked about some Azusa Canyon updates. We've talked about some things going on with the future. We're talked about trail closures. Trails are closed, that sucks. And then we talk about the new Tacomas and some other cool stuff. So this has uh, been this episode of, I still don't know what to call this. We can call this Dirt Nation News, the, the Dirt Nation News Network. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let us know what you think on this format. What are some other topics that we could cover? What are some other things that you'd like to see us talk about? Um, like I said, there's some other videos that I'm looking to do in the future that we can get into, some other concepts, all that stuff. But feedback is much appreciated you can let us know the good things that we're doing give us feedback on the bad things that we're doing so we can continue to make these videos better and, and just do cool things and, and all of that fun stuff but that's it for this video i want to thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe channel, on instagram facebook youtube and patreon you also for shirts hats hoodies and all those other goodies dirt nation off road big until next time thank you guys let's get it